I remember you bringing the cookies to our doorstep and meeting you a couple of times. And I always wondered what led you to start Molly B's cookies? You know, that's a really good question. And it actually is like, kind of like my anthem now. Like I was owned a really well-known business in a little tiny town in Alaska and the people that bought it fraud me and didn't pay me. It was like an over million dollar deal. And, um, I got down to my last $150 and I had a mortgage and a car payment and I was a single mom and I didn't know what I was going to do. So I started making super weird gourmet cookies and I was doing like 20 boxes a week. And then it went to like 45 boxes a day. And I had to move production into like a kitchen in a church from me and mixing up my house with my son, who was 10 at the time. And then I started getting help. And then we hired one bakery and then two bakeries. I moved to the big city of Anchorage area, you know, and started working with bakeries there. And then I ended up having to find out about a cookie factory. I didn't know what I was looking for. I'm thinking in my head, I need a Willy Wonka style thing, but I don't know. But it was like as far, we just kept growing so fast, I couldn't keep up. And so we finally got a co-packer and now I work with eight co-packers and I have a warehouse in Dallas and uh, my co-packers on the East Coast and the West Coast and the Mid Coast. And I mean, it's all a God thing. It's just unbelievable how quickly it's happened. That's truly remarkable. I know it's very hard for businesses to get started. So, I mean, that's honestly, it's an American dream story right there. You have $150, you start off just making something in your kitchen. And then before you know it, you're nationwide. So I'm young and I'm looking to go into business myself. What advice okay. would you have for young entrepreneurs based on your experiences? Well, to start out, you want to have proof of concept. You want to make sure that you have something that people are going to want. So um, start with your friends and family and then kind of stock them, you know, if you have friends and you have to give out a lot of product, a lot of product and get feedback and listen to the feedback. Don't take it personally. These are people that will be your customers in the future. So definitely listen to what the feedback is. And if it's consistent, then you need to look into that. If it's just a one try or one person here or whatever, there are people that get jealous when you start a business and they don't want you to do well. There's, you have to, so you really have to vet it out and just number one, stay close to the Lord. He will guide you in every single step that you want to take. And the most important thing besides the Lord is to make sure to never give up. The ones that who don't make it are because they gave up. <laughs> yeah. We were just talking about that. We'll have to follow up with that when we have our discussion later. So Molly, talking about this proof of concept, um, your cookies are unique is a, as a special way of putting it, you don't have normal cookies. So, I mean, we can get cookies People can get, go get regular chocolate chip cookies at the store. Yes. Boring chocolate chip cookies. We don't actually buy wah, them. Wah, wah. Right. We, <laughs> we make cookies at home and we have cookie contests at home. Right. And those, but those are not the cookies you make. So no. what is different? There's a reason why your cookies have taken off from, you know, hand delivering them to Kelly Chewbacca's house to more and more people <laughs> buying boxes to now. Yeah them becoming a, a store brand name. Yeah. What's different about yeah. your cookies for people who don't know? Well, I mean, okay. So our number one seller is called the straight fire and it's our rendition of s'mores. So we have like a big roasted marshmallow on top of it. And there's like, you know, graham cracker crumbs and chocolate chips. But then instead of using vanilla extract, I actually am using a cinnamon, like a hot cinnamon extract. So when you take a bite, you're getting this crazy palette of all, all these things. So people love the big marshmallow on top. That's always a, a good seller. Um, But we also have some that have double smoked bacon. I have a rib coffee grounds in some cookies um we have one that has um white chocolate with uh sun-dried mangoes and then we roll it in hot cheeto dust um there's just and they have fun names like the hot mess or straight fire big joe or the boss man they're like really fun names and uh i just most recently launched a, a bag of mini cookies that are it's like a if a snickerdoodle and a shortbread had a baby and then we added boba to it. It would come the boba doodles. And so we, I have a bag of boba doodles now and we have them in eight different flavors. We're launching four right now in two major stores. And I actually am flying to Seattle for a meeting with another major store on Tuesday. That's amazing. I remember my favorite cookies. I really could not stop eating them. Were the Earl Grey ones. What were those called? London yes, Pogs? the tea. Those are someone just two days ago, I was on a podcast for another guy and he got his box of cookies. He said, it was, this is the best cookie I've ever had. Period. Ever had. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and you can't stop eating them. They go with everything. They're the perfect dessert yes. cookie. They're the perfect mid afternoon cookie. They're the perfect breakfast pastry. 
They go with everything. Do you remember which was your favorite cookie? It had like this lemon glaze on top. Oh yeah, I remember that. That's the tea. Yeah. That's the tea. The oh, best, yeah. Like with the, the best cookie. Best cookie. cookie. Yep. Best. Yeah. Really, really yeah. good, unique cookie. So for people who are listening right now and thinking, I want a cookie, mollybees.com, M-O-L-L-Y-B-Z.com. B-Z. B-Z. I didn't want to be Molly BS. <laughs> That's why <what>, Molly BZ. <laughs> Well, so speaking of BS, you people who are business owners, people who are entrepreneurs encounter a lot of BS, face yep. a lot of trials, maybe hit mm-hmm. bumps or even hit failures and setbacks. You talked about one in your in your previous entrepreneur experience with just hitting a fraudster. What what are some of the trials you, you've hit in Molly BZ? Maybe we talk about one and pick it up after the break. Uh, can you yeah. just sort of inspire us with, hey, it's not like it's all... Uh, cookies and time with my son over here. This is what actually happened in this journey. There's that would be great. Lot. Yeah. It, well, a lot of people don't realize like just to get from start to finish to like with, with the Walmart deal from the first conversation until we're actually in store is about 15 to 18 months. And mm-hmm. so it takes a really long time to do that. And there's a lot of stuff in between that has to happen. And they might be like, mm, we don't like that and drop you and be like, never mind. And so, and that has happened to me, you know, and we're like, whoa, what just happened? We, I thought we were best friends, you know? And so you have to be on the game, make sure that your team and you have to work in excellence. You have to make sure that everything is the same. Like yesterday, all we did was a meeting about UPC numbers and three of us read them off the same ones to each other. Because did you know that stores can find you up to a hundred thousand dollars if you have the wrong UPC number, which is the barcode on the back of your wow. thing. If they get a, your product and it doesn't scan correctly, they will fine you. So there's just things like that, that you have to constantly be, but the, I, I'd say the biggest struggle in my business, because we are growing so fast right now, I'm doing seven launches and we've got an eighth one coming and it's just uh, getting enough investment to, to grow as fast as we're growing because every oh, yeah. single launch is a several, like $50,000 a launch around there. Yeah. That makes sense. Just finding people who believe enough in the vision and the product to continue yep. to invest in the next stage and the next launch. Yeah. So absolutely. I'm, I'm curious. And maybe if you even have a soundbite on this, where do you get, where do you draw on for your perseverance? It sounds like a lot of this is just like you said, not giving up. Where do you draw on your perseverance from? A hundred percent Jesus, a hundred percent Jesus. And like I, my, I love my church. I go to Kings Chapel, Eagle river, and it's a spirit filled church and they will pray for me and pray with me. Or they will, the, they will know and just call me and say like, we feel like you need prayer today. And it's always on time, you know? And so that's where it is. And, you know, listening for that still small voice. And sometimes like I got invited to a thing from a major, major TV network and I prayed about it and God said no, and I didn't go, but it was a big decision. You know, I wanted to go, my flesh wanted to go, but I knew that they were, I found out later aligned with something that I don't believe in. So, you know, it was such a protection for my brand, you know, so definitely when things get hard, just hit your knees and pray. God will always show up and it won't make sense sometimes right away, but it always does in the long run. 